What's going on guys crypto fiend here with everything crypto and in today's video We're gonna be doing an updated version on how to use the Binance exchange The reasoning for this updated version is that Binance implemented new features on their website that could prevent you from losing a lot of money. And that's what it's all about. It's about making those gains and keeping them. So for today, we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step guide on everything you need to know to start trading on the Binance exchange today. So if you guys don't know what the Binance exchange is, it's a place where you can buy a handful of different cryptocurrencies. You cannot buy Bitcoin on this exchange though. So if you're thinking of buying Bitcoin, you could do it through Coinbase or a couple other different websites, but you cannot do it on here. So what you want to do if you do not already have an account is go over here and press register. Fill out the basic information and get yourself logged in. I will also be leaving a referral link in the description. If you use that link, it won't cost you anything, but you will be supporting the channel and I would highly appreciate it. So once you're logged in, this is the page you're going to see. You're going to have some information up here and down here you're going to have some security features. Now I highly suggest using some of these security features to prevent people from hacking into your account and stealing your hard earned cryptocurrencies. So right over here, this is where you could change your password. Down here, this is where you could create an API private key. This isn't very necessary for the day-to-day -day traders, but if you want to set it up, you can. Over here, you have the two-factor authenticators. Now you have an SMS version and a Google version. The SMS version, what this is, is when you go to log into your account, Binance is going to send you a text message with a six-digit numerical code. You need to enter that code in order to access your account. Down here with the Google version is Google Authenticator is an app that you download on your phone. On that app, you will have a six digit numerical code that changes every 10 seconds. So when you go to log into your account, Binance is going to ask you for that six digit code. You go on your app on your phone and enter the code. I highly suggest using one of these features. Now up here in this section where it says using BNB to pay for fees, 50% discount turned on. So what that is, is Binance actually has their own cryptocurrency. It's called the Binance token. When you use the Binance token to purchase other cryptocurrencies, you actually cut the fees in half. So if you want to save a couple extra bucks, you could use the Binance token. And what's also nice is the more people that come onto the Binance platform, the more users, the more valuable the Binance token will be over time. Now this is the homepage when you're logged into your account. Up here, you're going to have some news that Binance comes out with every so often. Right here, this is going to be all your most viewed cryptocurrencies. Down here, this is going to be all the cryptocurrencies listed on the Binance exchange. Now, what's also nice about the Binance exchange is they have multiple markets. So as you can see, they have the Binance token market, where they have a good amount of cryptocurrencies. The Bitcoin market, where they have the most amount of cryptocurrencies. And the ethereum market where they have a good amount as well and the tether market now this is not us dollar this isn't where you can enter your credit card to purchase cryptocurrencies the tether is a specific cryptocurrency that is valued around the dollar range for cryptocurrencies over here as well you have a favorites tab so if i wanted to click on my favorite cryptocurrency so i could have them all lined up in my own separate tab i can do that as well so I want, what I want to go over right now is all the separate tabs up here to show you guys everything you need to know as well as being able to navigate the exchange with Breeze. So first we're going to go over to the exchange tab. Now this is where you're going to purchase and view the prices of different cryptocurrencies. Now they have a basic version and an advanced version. The only differences between these two versions is that the advanced version looks a little more intimidating as well as they have more studies and tools that you can use on the graphs. But first we're going to take a look at the basic version and then we will take a look at the advanced version. Now this is what the basic version exchange looks like. Now I'm going to go over every single thing on this page just so you guys know exactly what you're looking at. Up here, this is where you will see the abbreviation of the cryptocurrency you're looking at. So ADA is Cardano. Now if you guys don't know the abbreviations, a, a tool I use to know what the abbreviation it, abbreviations are for each cryptocurrency is I use CoinMarketCap.com right here. 
Now what I do is I go to whatever cryptocurrency I'm currently looking at for Cardano, for example, and it will show the abbreviation right next to the name. And then you can just go back over to Binance and pull it up. So that is the abbreviation for Cardano and we are in the Bitcoin exchange currently. Right here, this is the last price in Satoshis as well as the dollar amount right there. 24 hour change in Satoshis as well as a percent change, 24 hour high, 24 hour low, and 24 hour volume in Bitcoin. Right over here, this whole red section, this is going to be all the sell orders. So this is everyone trying to sell Cardano at this moment. Down here, this is all the buy orders. This is everyone trying to buy Cardano at this moment. And this is the current price of Cardano in Satoshi value. But you could also look up here if you wanna look at this, uh, the US dollar version. Over here, this is gonna be your basic chart. This is where you're gonna view uh, the chart movement, all that kind of stuff. Up here, they have different tools, uh, filters where you could change from minutes, one minute to five minutes to 15 to 30, as well as hours. So if I wanted to view at each candlestick as four hours, I could do that. So in this four hour time, we had this huge run up one day. So I could view it all as one day as well as one week. But I like to keep it in the one minute range so I know exactly how Cardano is trading every single minute. Over here, you could change to the depth view as well as you can do full screen of the depth view as well as you know the basic version here of the depth view. I like to keep it as this size. You don't really need the full screen. Um, down here, well, let me actually go over the different parts on the chart. So right here on this green tab right here, this is the current value of Cardano in Satoshis as well as um, they also list the lows and the highs for the past uh, some odd minutes for Cardano. So as you can see down here where this arrow is, that is the lowest price that Cardano is at for the past uh, couple hours or so. As well as up here, this is the all time high in the last couple hours. Down here, this is the MACD chart. Now this chart is really useful if you understand how to use it. So to sum things up for you guys, when the crypto when whatever cryptocurrency you're looking at for example cardano when we're looking at cardano if cardano is on this line that i'm currently on if cardano is on that line that means cardano is being traded at the perfect amount now if you see green that means cardano is being overbought that means more people are buying it than what it's actually worth and when it's red that means less people are buying it than it's actually worth so if you guys wanted to get in on it at a good price, you would want to buy it in the red where it's being bought at, not what it's actually worth. And that's a nice little tool to uh, learn for trading. I think I'm going to do a future video on the MACD just to go more in depth on it. So if we go over here, this is where you can, right now I'm in the favorites tab, but if we go over to Bitcoin, this is where you have all the lists, the list of all the different cryptocurrencies for the Bitcoin tab, as well as you can do the other tabs. So you can view them all on the side here, as well as the percent changes. And you can also look at the volume. Down here, this is the trading history. Now the trading history can be helpful when viewing a chart because you can see if more people are buying or selling the cryptocurrency. So if you see all of these numbers as green, that means everyone's buying it, which means you might wanna get in or hold off. And if it's all red, that means everyone is selling it. Also, they have a yours tab where you can view your purchases for the past couple of days of Cardano, which we're looking at right now. Down here, now this is where you're actually going to buy your cryptocurrencies. So it says buy ADA, we're buying Cardano. Bitcoin balance, this is showing how much Bitcoin I actually have in my wallet to purchase Cardano. As you can see, I don't have any Bitcoin in my wallet because I have all my holdings in other alternative coins right now, but that's where your balance would be shown. So right down here, this is where you're gonna buy Cardano. Right here, this is gonna be the Bitcoin value. Now you're gonna be buying Cardano in the Bitcoin value, not in the dollar amount value. So you need to be able to understand the, the pricings of the currency you're looking at in Bitcoin. Now how I do this is I actually use this website. It's a Bitcoin price calculator right here. It's called CEX.io. I will leave it in the description as well so you guys can easily access it. And I just pinned it to my uh, bar up here so I can always have access to it. So what's nice about this is say I want to buy Cardano at 20, 25 cents. 
I would type in 0.25 and it would show me the Bitcoin value right here, 0 0.00001251. So I would go back over to the, Bit the Binance exchange and I could type in 0 0.00001251. What was it? One, two, one, two, five, one, one, two, five, one. And that means that is 25 cents in Bitcoin. So I know exactly what the price is in Bitcoin. And down here, I can put in the amount of Bitcoin I want. As you can see, it says your max amount and I can't purchase any right now, but it would show your max amount. Right here, they have this nice little feature where they have these percentages. So what this means, if I wanna purchase 25% of my Bitcoin for Cardano, I would press the 25 button. If I wanted to spend 50% of my Bitcoin on Cardano, I could do the 50 button as well as 75 and 100%. And then the total amount would show up down here. You would press buy and you would confirm the transaction. Over here, they have the sell side. Now it's practically the same thing when it comes to typing out the amount that you wanna sell at as well as the amount you wanna sell. Now I currently have 3000 Cardano, so I could it shows my max amount right there. If I wanted to sell half of my Cardano, I could press the 50 button, 50%, and it would show 1510, as well if I wanted to sell all of it, I could sell all of it, and then it would show the current, the, the full amount in Bitcoin value down here. I would press sell, and then it would instantly uh, do the transaction. Now it would only instantly do the transaction if I had the exact amount of Bitcoin that it's worth. So as you can see, this is the current price of Bitcoin. So if I had 1849 in here and I press sell, then it would instantly sell my, my, um, my Cardano. If it was not the current value, it would go over to your order book. And I will show you guys that in a little bit. So over here, this is the new feature I wanted to show you guys. This is the feature that can prevent you guys from losing a lot of money. And you need to know this feature because like I said, it can prevent you from losing a lot of money. What this is, it's a stop loss limiter. Uh, a couple other exchanges do have this, but Binance just implemented it into their website recently. And I'm so happy that they did it because this is hands down my favorite exchange and they definitely needed this little feature. So what this is, is <clears throat> it's a tool where you can purchase cryptocurrencies as well as selling cryptocurrencies, put in orders and not be at your computer and your orders will go through. So what I mean by this is I'm gonna explain for the buy and sell side because the buy, buying side and the selling side is a little bit different. For the buying side, for example, if you wanted to buy Cardano at 20 cents and it was currently at 25 cents. What you would want to do is you could enter the 20 cent amount right here and then for the limit part you would enter a couple cents below the 20 cents for example 15 cents. So what that means and then you would enter the amount you want to buy and the amount in Bitcoin you could also do the amount in Bitcoin you want to buy but you could enter the amount you want to buy and you would press buy. Now what this would mean is your order would go into the order book and you could leave your computer, you could go wherever you want, you can go on a date, you can go to the movies, you can log out of your account and you don't have to sit on your account. And when Cardano goes below, when Cardano hits and goes below that 20 cent range, you will instantly begin to buy Cardano. Now this is a really great feature because that means you don't have to be sitting on your computer all day waiting for Cardano to hit that price point that you want. So how it works, is like I said, if Cardano's at 25 cents and you put in a stop limit for 20 cents and then you put the limit for 17 cents, for example, when Cardano hits that 20 cent range, you're gonna begin to fill your order. You're gonna begin to purchase in Cardano and you're gonna continue to purchase Cardano through the 17 cent range. But once you pass that 17 cent range, you're gonna stop purchasing Cardano. That's why you wanna set the limiter very low. For example, like 17 cents wasn't a good example, but for like 10 cents. So anywhere between 20 and 10 cents, you're going to purchase Cardano at that order amount that you want. So that is a great feature that I like. So you don't have to be sitting on your computer all day. You can buy, you could set it and it will sit in your order book until Cardano hits that price that you want it to be. Now for the sell side, the sell side is a little different because you can set it for above the current price as well as below the current price. So what I mean by this 
is for example, if Cardano was at 20 cents and you wanted to sell Cardano when it hits 30 cents because you feel like Cardano is going to dump or whatever, you could set this for 30 cents and you could set the limiter for 40 cents. And what this would do is when if Cardano hits 30 cents, you, you would begin to sell. And between 30 cents and 40 cents, you would continue to sell. And then after 40 cents, if it continued to go higher, you would stop selling. Now, this is a great way uh, to implement cashing out when you think the market's going to crash, as well as you can set it below the current value. And what this does is it's called a stop loss. Now, what this means is say Cardano is at 20 cents. You can set a limiter. So I, for example, I do it 10% below the current, the current price that I purchase at. So if Cardano is at 20 cents, I set a 10% below limit. So I would set a stop loss limit at 18 cents. And then I would set the limit a couple cents below 18 cents because like I said before, your order is going to begin selling between the 18 cents and anything below that. Now you want to set a good difference apart because with these markets, they can jump cents very fast. So if you just set it to 18 cents and Cardano goes to 18 cents for a second, then you're, it's going to skip your order and you're not going to be able to sell. So that's why you have to put a couple cents in between so it has time to be filled. So the benefit to this is it can help you lose, a, it can prevent you from losing a lot of money. So like I said, I usually do a 10% difference. So like I said, if Cardano is 20 cents, I set it at around 18 cents. And what this does is so if Cardano drops for any reason and hits 18 cents, I will begin to sell my Cardano. So if Cardano continues to drop, say to 10 cents, I don't lose half my money. I only lose 10% of my money. So this is a great, great feature that I highly, highly suggest you guys using. And like I said, you could set the order, you can log out of your account, you don't have to worry about it. You can sleep easy at night, you don't have to stress over the price of your cryptocurrencies. So I highly suggest using these this feature. Um, I hope I explained that well. It is kind of hard to explain. But if you guys do have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. But that is what the stop limiter is. So moving on, let's go to the advanced exchange and I want to just show you guys what it looks like and the different layout of it. This is the advanced, advanced exchange. Over here you have the graph, uh, down here you have, uh, right down here you have all your holdings, your current holdings. So that's the difference between this, uh, this advanced exchange too. As you can see your current holdings, what you're holding in your wallet which is really nice. Over here you have your sell orders, your buy orders, the current value, the history, uh, the trading history. Down here you have your buy and your sell and as well as the stop limit which is right here. So those are the only differences as well as they do have more tools. So if I used any of these tools they would appear on the chart. For example, I could do like a trend line or whatever like that. See I could draw lines as well as um, indicators. So I could put on the MACD which is down here. I could put on, uh, you know, just anything I want, RSI. So that's the differences between the two sides. Now, if you guys are new to this, I highly suggest just sticking with the basic version. Uh, there's not that big of a difference. It'll just make your life a lot easier when it comes to navigating everything and just getting started. So now these two tabs are not gonna be for traders. Those are for something else. So we're gonna skip over these two tabs and we're gonna go over to funds. Now funds, this is where you're gonna be holding all your cryptocurrencies. This is where you can view your current amount of cryptocurrencies that you're holding. Uh, as you can see, these are all my current holdings. Um, they have this little tab up here that you can press to eliminate all the zero balances so you don't have to look at all of them. Uh, but if you do have a little bit in one, it's gonna pull, it's gonna show up. But this is all your current holdings. Now over here you have the deposit and the withdrawal tab. On the deposit tab, this means you are trying to add Cardano to your, your account. So if I pressed on this, it's gonna show this uh, address. You could copy this address and set, and you would put that address into whatever wallet or exchange you're trying to send Cardano from to Binance. So if you're trying to send some a currency to this exchange, you would go to the deposit tab. 
Now, every currency does have a different address. So the substratum tab is going to have a different address from the Cardano tab. So make sure you're on your currency that you're trying to send to the account. Now, I'm gonna show you guys down here, the main currency that people send to the account is Bitcoin, of course, because that's the one you're gonna be trading with. So you would go down to Bitcoin, you'd press the deposit tab, you would copy this address, put it in your Bitcoin wallet or Coinbase or whatever you're trying to send from to Binance, and then you would send it. Also, with the withdraw tab, now this is the withdraw tab. I already have a wallet linked. You can link your wallets to the account so you don't have to copy and paste the addresses every time, but make sure your address is correct because if your address is wrong, you will lose your money forever and that would absolutely suck. So you would insert the address here that you're trying to send to, put the amount that you want to send, and then submit. So that is what the deposit and withdraw is. Uh, going over to orders, open orders. Open orders is where you're, like I was talking about earlier in the exchange, when you go to purchase a cryptocurrency and you don't purchase it at the exact amount that it's valued at, it's going to go to this tab. It would show, I have an open order of Cardano, the amount I'm trying to buy, at the price I'm trying to buy, and then it would say either filled or not filled, and you can also cancel them here if you want to cancel the transaction. Order history, this is going to be all my order histories that I've put through the system. And what's really nice about this is if you wanna print it out as like a PDF, you can do that right here. As well as trade histories, you can see all your trading histories. Now they do have a support tab. Their support team is pretty good. It's not the best, but uh, none of these exchanges have the best support teams, but they are good compared to others. As well as a news tab where you can uh, see the hottest and latest news. Over here, they have different languages. They have a good amount of different lang languages. Uh, so if you need to change the language, but that is mainly the exchange, guys. Um, it's very simple. That's why I really like this exchange. It's really easy for new people that are really just starting out in cryptocurrencies and they want to start purchasing other coins other than Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin off of Coinbase. They can use this, purchase whatever they want. They can store them on here. Um, I do suggest if you guys are holding for the long term, so if you plan on just buying cryptocurrencies and holding them, I suggest not keeping them on Binance. Try to find a wallet that's compatible with that cryptocurrency because you never know if Binance wants to do whatever what they want with your account, they can, and you don't want to lose your money. So uh, if you're planning on doing that for the long term, I suggest not keeping them stored on Binance. But if you are a day trader, you're, you're probably fine to just keep them on here for now, but I wouldn't suggest keeping all your holdings on here. Um, so that really is the exchange. Uh, like I said, guys, I will leave this Bitcoin uh, calculator linked in the description, as well as uh, coinmarketcap.com to view all the abbreviations of each cryptocurrency, as well as I will leave a, re a reference link in the description for Binance. If you use that link, it won't cost you anything, but you will be supporting the channel and I would highly appreciate it. So that is going to be the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any questions at all, leave them in the description. I will do my best to answer them as clearly as possible. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.